I hate missing a, a video by one second. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do this again. Um, anyhow, I'm going to show you how to paint Fieldstone, okay? Um, we've had, uh, I'm gonna try and do two separate videos on this because um, the structure is appreciably different and um, and that's reason enough right there. All right, I'm going to shake up my, I'm running with a, a medium gray, my folk art. This is going to be my base coat. We're going to be running with three layers of gray. Um, and uh, remember, you want your colors to be an equal distance apart from each other percentage wise so because we're doing three colors that means when I'm done with this structure this stonework 25% of that structure is going to be black 25% of that structure is going to be dark gray 25% of that structure is going to be a medium gray and 25% of that structure is going to be a light gray okay obviously it's completely black based now Okay, so we're going to take it down to 75%, which means we're going to be covering 75% of this structure in that dark gray, okay? I'm using a, a great big brush, okay? Um, and don't forget to get all the way down to your base. Um, a lot of people make the rookie mistake of just trying to hit the stone and if you do that what you're going to end up doing is you're not going to be hitting your lowest area on the bricks and or stone or what what have you and what that's going to do is that's going to create a, a weird kind of an artificial shadow that shouldn't be there and um, and it'll be quite noticeable and if you try and cover it up in a later stage um, it's going to become even more prominent because you're trying to cover a completely black color with a lighter and lighter and lighter shade of, of gray, which means you're going to get kind of almost like a, a negative on a, on a photograph kind of effect, which you don't want to have. There's a time and a place for everything. The, the, the true secret is knowing when to use the right technique at the right time. Okay, that could be very effective if you want to do like a, a, a dungeon scene with like um, you're going to have all sorts of uh, lightning effects down in there and you know you want something like a, a Frankenstein you know angle on that room. Great, go for it. But if you're going for just a natural overgrown you know it's been out forever. Um, Hey, baby girl. Hello. You are on my video. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Oh, come on. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. You didn't hear me say that, by the way. Anyhow... Um, okay. You know what's that song, Talk Dirty to Me? Yeah, it's, it's a song. I was talking about a song. I wanted my wife to sing to me. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got 75% coverage here. Okay. Now, I want to cover 50% in my next color. This is my medium gray. Okay, here we go. You gotta be careful with this one. You don't want too little or too much. Sometimes your in-between colors are your hardest ones to, to get. So, you know, monitor yourself, you know, pretty closely. And you'll never, like I said, you're never gonna hit 100% all the time. It's, it's a range. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, 
about 50% of that surface structure now is covered with that neutral gray. Now, I want to go back and I want to hit those very, very highlighted colors on just 25% of the surface. And um, not only when you're talking 25% surface coverage, it can be even less. You might want to concentrate a slightly higher percentage in your uh, on your edges and corners because edges and corners tend to, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, um, those tend to catch light. And so that's how we as artists can emulate nature, okay? Which is what you're trying to do, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm, I'm highlighting my edges first because I want to make sure that those are going to get the, the greatest percentage of this highlight color. And then I'm going to do a really a light, light brushing of this feather light, feather light. Don't, um, don't go crazy. And if you ever want to not have a lot of color down in here along your edges, um, this is the color you want to miss that with. If you want to, if you want to leave some color away from the base. So here we go. We've, uh, we've covered it. Uh, let's see if I can get this light into a useful position for you guys. Okay. And of course, light affects everything. Light can make it seem lighter than it is. A lack of light will make it seem darker than it is. So, um, here's where we're at. Um, the, the main thing is with Fieldstone, Fieldstone is the most forgiving of dry brushing. Um, we're going to be moving on to Gothic, and Gothic is less forgiving. You've got to have a much more sensitive touch when you're uh, when you're dealing with it. Um, I'm going to show you uh, what I've been working on today for uh, John Bischoff, my buddy uh, in the Quad Cities at Have Fun Collectibles, and I'm probably going to be sending him some pictures tonight and checking out. Uh, you know what he thinks and uh, what other work um, needs to be done uh, this is going to represent his jungle uh, table it uh, it goes uh, with the um, arena the arena would be right here and if you remember it had three openings and I, for the openings I thought going into what would be the jungle uh, section um, would be like a pair of tiki dolls. Um, I thought that would be very characterful. These are movable, by the way. You could do all sorts of stuff with them. Um, uh, he wanted some structures uh, to look like they were that they were originally part of the uh, the arena. So I've made uh, these two structures here. Um, and we're going to be uh, doing some work with trees and whatnot. Uh, you'll obviously notice it's going to be kind of shifting into a desert area. Um, so I've, I've kind of uh, done a half and half there, uh, which we discussed. Um, I haven't done the highlights on that yet, but I will be uh, doing that shortly. You'll also notice that this had a, uh, a uh, kind of a little uh, hiding cubby hole in the back. Uh, where your character can uh, hide out of line of sight or jump someone or, or what have you. Um, I thought that was a really cool idea of his. And um, so uh, I built that to his, uh, to his specs. Um, so that's what's going on. Um, and uh, if any of you guys are into uh, comic books at all, man... He is the guy to go to. Not only that, the man has uh, comic book artists come into his store. 
um, and teach people how to draw and stuff. It's it's an awesome store. It, it's very, very cool. Uh, the people are outstanding, so, you know, keep them in mind if you're in the Quad Cities. So, that's that. Um... The last thing I'm going to say real quick is I, I caught a couple of uh, vids. Um, Blue Table Painting, I guess they've got like a real slowdown for the summer. Um, you know, they all got families and stuff. They're, you know, you know, I feel kind of bad for them. So if you're sitting on the fence about having them paint an army or something, you know, now's the time to act. You know, help them out. This is, this whole community community is about helping each other so um when when people are down you know try and help them out take care everybody love you